Hi there, I'm Logan Medish, and this is High Caliber History. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook over the last couple of years, then you've probably seen a few of the posts I've made about the half-century-long cold case regarding the theft of a historic long rifle from a museum in Pennsylvania. Well, they finally found the guy who did it, 78-year-old Thomas Gavin, and he was recently sentenced for the crime. Due to the statute of limitations, he served just one day in jail, followed by one year of house arrest, two years of probation, and fines of about $49,000. At his sentencing, he was hunched over in a wheelchair with labored breathing, and he said, quote, I'm sorry for all this trouble. I never really thought about it back then, and now it's all come out. I didn't think it would make a hell of a lot of difference. Turns out, Gavin burgled a string of museums on the East Coast in the 60s and 70s, stealing a number of different firearms. He targeted the American Swedish Historical Museum, the Hershey Story Museum, the Landis Valley Museum, the Mercer Museum, and the York County Historical Center. His goal, it seems, was not financial gain. Instead, it was just greed, since he hid the items in his barn for 50 years before trying to sell the rifle in 2018. K.T. Newton, the assistant United States attorney who prosecuted the case, said, quote, In my experience prosecuting these types of cases, oftentimes it's that the individuals just want to have the thing, Ms. Newton said. It's really a phenomenon. We've seen it before with antique firearms and antique maps. Their obsession is that they want to have them, and so they just take them. Now, when Newton tried to sell the rifle, currently valued at about $175,000, to a local antique arms dealer for just $4,000, the dealer bought it thinking that the gun was a reproduction. But he soon found a photo of the gun in a book from 1980, with a caption noting that it had been stolen years before. In total, the buyer paid him $27,150 for the grouping of items, including other firearms that would also turn out to be stolen. This set wheels back in motion on the decades-old cold case that ultimately resulted uh, in the arrest and confession, but not before a number of the items made their way to auction and into the hands of other collectors. Thankfully, the new owners of these stolen items willingly gave up their claims and returned them to the museums. On December 17, 2021, the items were finally returned to the victimized museums. Of course, there was the long rifle that we've mentioned before, made by John Christian Order, which is one of only two flintlock rifles bearing his name in existence today. The other belongs to the Royal Collection at Windsor Castle in England. There were a number of other guns in the repatriation as well, including another flintlock rifle dating to about 1830, a Colt Model 1860 Army revolver engraved on the backstrap to near Elfwing, which had originally been stolen in 1969 and was sold at auction in 2019 for $6,000. The other guns included a Colt Model 1851 Navy revolver, also stolen in 1969, a pair of French pocket pistols, a brass barrel dagger pistol, two 18th century French military pistols, a Pettengill revolver, stolen in November 1970, a Josiah L's double action revolver, also stolen in November of 1970, and another Joseph L's gun, a Barhammer revolver, stolen in May of 1965. Now, Gavin's actions say a lot about the history of museum security and concerns that still exist today in smaller museums and, and those with smaller budgets. The case that Gavin stole the order rifle from in 1971 was thought to be theft proof but he brazenly used a crowbar to pry it open in broad daylight not long after the museum had opened for business that morning. A tour later in the day by the Boy Scouts noticed that the gun was missing. No one knows exactly how Gavin made it out of the building unnoticed with the almost five foot long rifle, but nonetheless, he managed to do so. Jacqueline McGuire, the special agent in charge of the FBI's Philadelphia division, noted that, quote, the absence of the items from these museums represented not just a physical or financial loss, but a loss to every visitor, every student, and every researcher who didn't get to see the items over the years and missed out on important pieces of our nation's heritage. The absence of these items was, for so long, a loss to the historical record. 
and I really could not put it any better than that myself. Thankfully, the items are now back where they belong to their respective institutions. Personally, I don't know that I consider Thomas Gavin's sentence to be justice served, but at least the items have been returned. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the whole event and the sentence that Gavin received. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of High Caliber History. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Logan Medish, and I'll see you in the next video.